recognize this man. Police are looking for him. He was caught on camera assaulting a 78-year-old man in broad daylight on January 8th in San Francisco. The incident happened around 7.30 in the morning on Natoma Street in the Soma District. The suspect went on foot. The victim was reportedly taken to the hospital and is doing okay. I've seen um, assaults like this on the street of San Francisco, particularly directed toward their seniors. Uh, and it just, it's disgusting. Moment for Black Lives Matter in San Francisco. Organized by 17-year-old Tiana Day, thousands of San Franciscans and Bay Area residents showed up in solidarity to protest police brutality and systemic oppression of black people by police. The demonstration originally took place on the Bridges pedestrian path, where protesters took a knee in unison for eight minutes and 46 seconds in honor of the amount of time a police officer kneeled on George Floyd's neck, which killed him. As the protests grew, more and more cars began showing their support for the movement by slowing down and stopping, allowing protesters to safely and peacefully flow out onto the highway, making way for one of the most spectacular showings of solidarity the nation has ever seen. My God, four cars. This is the message to all black people universally. We now have to start talking amongst each other. We now have to meet somewhere or have some kind of underground railroad meeting socially because what they're trying to do is they're trying to separate us and uh, just throwing money in front of our faces. Now clearly $5 million sounds like a lot to the average black person, but this is not nearly enough for the trauma that our ancestors and that we currently are taking in. In our committee, we need to have smart black people who know financial literacy because Whatever amount of money they want to give in these different states, we don't want our black people going out and spending it and then not having anything for their children. And I'm hearing it pop up in San Francisco, LA, Boston, Chicago. Now, that's all cool and everything, but I think that the first people that should get any form of reparations is our black people in the South. Most of our ancestors migrated or escaped from the hell of slavery and went to the north, but it all was in the south. Most of those plantations are still there. So you shouldn't be having talks about San Francisco, LA, Boston, Chicago, without talking about the south. Not to mention that Mississippi is now trying to pass a Jim Crow law, a new Jim Crow law. To all of my black people universally, do not fall for this trick. We need a reparation that increases in value. We need to talk amongst each other in our Underground Railroad Committee and find a form of reparations that increases with value. First, we should be talking about us as black people. What do we give out to the world? That is something super special that we can hold on to. Why is California always the testing ground? First it was talked about LA, now there's San Francisco. Why does that state always have to be the testing ground for anything? And this is something that's near and dear to all black people's heart. So why does California think that they need to be the first ones to talk about it? It's just a question. individuals that will be carrying baseball bats, they'll be carrying pipes, knives, what, what have you, any type of weapon, and they're really in a moment of psychosis to where they are not making sense, they're screaming obscenities, they're whatever, and you have to walk past that, right? Um, people have to walk past that and they have to deal with it, and so it's kind of jarring and, and, and can be really 
you know, traumatizing to some people, especially young children. You know, uh, I grew up around a lot of drug use and people acting erotic, uh, you know, um, and not acting right. And it, it, it had an impact on how, um, how I grew up. Get home safe. Come on, man. After I made the video down here with the children, it, it created such a ruckus that they put up these fences, like kind of like, again, a grandstand to try to act like they were gonna do something. And I actually almost fell for it. I was like, oh man, we're having a policy change. We're gonna be doing a little bit better out here. And uh, it just didn't turn out like that. And it's just back to the business as usual. Um, as soon as Brooke Jenkins got elected, it's like she should carry her spot, so who cares? Uh, and it's kind of sad that these uh, these neighbors have to be sandwiched in between 8th Emission and 7th Emission. Both bus stops are basically being hijacked by um, drug dealers and, and drug users. And, and it's turned into like one of the biggest open air drug markets here in San Francisco. Uh, and, and this is a main corridor for San Francisco. This is not like some back alley or like some uh, um, shoddy part of town. I pay um, $2,500 uh, a month for a studio apartment in this area this is not acceptable in my opinion that i should have to um live like this or or, or deal with this when i come outside to walk my dog or, or to uh see a family member my family members don't even really like to come down here and see me because of the crime you'll see some of the drug dealers they're being wearing masks and ponchos This is the bus stop that I filmed the children getting off. It's kind of rough right here to get off the bus. I mean, it's a lot of homelessness, a lot of drug dealing going on. It's kind of, it's kind of sad, you know? You see this type of stuff. You see the San Francisco police paddy wagon parked right there, but you won't see anybody in the back of that van and you won't even see the police out here doing their job. I mean, we just walked through one of the biggest open air drug markets here in San Francisco, and you'll see these people just out there selling and smoking drugs. Uh, and it's raining outside right now. It's not a really clear day. It's a pretty ugly day to be out here. So the activity is actually low today. Um, and it, it's just unbelievable that we can't get city officials to do their job. We cannot get the San Francisco Police Department to do their job to clean up our city so our children and our family members are safe walking down these streets. It's very sad. This has been the craziest week of my life. This week I lost my puppy, Chloe. She's a five month old French Bulldog. I was walking her at 5.45 p.m. in my neighborhood and I was assaulted by three men holding a gun. They punched me twice in the face. This is what my face looked like right after the attack. The men who attacked me took Chloe, got into a car, and drove away. Puppy. I just started screaming. I didn't know what else to do. I screamed as loud as I could. ABC 7 News obtained this surveillance video of the assault. You can see the men wearing masks and white hoodies walking up Hyde Street near Broadway. After the attack, they ran into a getaway car and drove away. Okay, I just had to uh, finally make this video because I am just so done. I am so done hearing about everything else. I am so done hearing about COVID deaths when the number one cause of death of people between 18 and 45 is fentanyl poisoning. And the amount of people that have no idea what that is blows my mind. I did not know what it was a year and a half ago when my 23-year-old brother passed away from fentanyl poisoning and so many other people have lost so many amazing people from this. And it just... So, um, I have decided to make this video so that I can provide you some education and hopefully stop people from making this choice because there's are ruining families and we're losing 175 people every day to that noise. Sorry.
Um, so if you don't know what fentanyl is, fentanyl is an illicit drug that is being made in China in labs, and it is being taken over our borders from Canada and Mexico, and it is being sold illegally um, by lacing it in drugs or selling it in pure form. Uh, you are seeing it being laced in cocaine, you're seeing it being laced in Xanax, in Percocet, and now weed. Uh, so any type of illegal drug that you buy, any drug that you get that is not prescribed, has the possibility of being laced with fentanyl. And let me tell you that if it is laced with fentanyl, two milligrams can kill someone, whether it is swallowed, inhaled, or just touched. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin, and 100 times more potent than morphine. There was uh, some people in Florida who took cocaine that was laced with fentanyl, they went into cardiac arrest, two of their friends didn't do the drugs, but they were performing CPR on them, and from just performing CPR on them and inhaling the drug, they also went into cardiac arrest. This is one of the most dangerous drugs that we have ever seen. Why are we not talking about this? Just please, honestly, I ask you to educate yourselves, to share this with your friends, to let them know. If you decide you want to do drugs and you want to get them off the street, there are testing kits that are available in many states that might help your chances. But honestly, guys, know the weight of your decision. This isn't the 70s anymore when everyone is doing drugs and the only danger is overdosing on that drug. You can be poisoned from the lightest amount. You can take, like my brother did, took one pill and he was dead. And that could be you. Executive Bob Lee was killed in Rincon Hill, an upscale San Francisco neighborhood. It's home to many young professionals. According to the latest census, the median household income there is more than $244,000. Lee's murder is the first reported homicide this year to take place within the southern station of the police department. Neighborhoods like the Tenderloin and the Bayview have had more homicides so far this year. Yet that seems to go unnoticed among many San Franciscans. But that one statistic in Rincon Hill has summoned the tech industry talking and posting a lot. Tesla's CEO Elon Musk posted, Violent crime in SF is horrific. Many more executives criticized Mayor London Breed and city officials for creating, in their words, unsafe streets. Congratulations, your policies have claimed another life. But is San Francisco really as dangerous as these tech executives claim? Not according to the latest 2021 FBI and local police crime data as compiled in ABC 7's Neighborhood Safety Tracker. San Francisco is close to the bottom of the list of major cities with 6.9 homicides per 100,000 people. Austin, Los Angeles, Miami, Washington, Houston, Minneapolis, Oakland, Chicago, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Detroit, and St. Louis had more reported homicides than San Francisco. Supervisor Matt Dorsey represents the district where Lee was murdered. This is not a city where anybody should fear for their lives at 2.30 in the morning. Let's dig even deeper. The crime trends for the year as of April 2nd, 2023 have 12 homicides compared to 10 for the same period last year. The number of reported assault cases is up by 2%, and robberies are up by 14%, but rape and human trafficking crimes are significantly down. Statistics don't matter when it's somebody you love who has lost their life uh, in this incident in San Francisco. In San Francisco's Japantown, police say the gunman was a 15-year-old boy. KTVU crime reporter Henry Lee live tonight in Japantown with the latest on the investigation. Henry? Yeah, Mike, this teenager is in custody as well as a second boy accused of helping him after the security guard was shot and killed. Flowers and candles mark the spot where 40-year-old security guard Gavin Boston was shot and killed in San Francisco's Japantown. It's a tragedy. It really is a tragedy. I think Japantown as a whole 
and our surrounding neighborhoods. The alleged shooter, a 15-year-old boy, was arrested by San Francisco police. A second suspect, a 14-year-old boy, in custody as an alleged accessory. We all lost not one life, but really, you know, the two, uh, the two suspects, so three lives were lost. It happened a little after 5 Wednesday afternoon at the Japantown Mall in Webster and Post. I don't understand why is it that a little, he looked like a little tiny kid. I mean, he looked so small. Carla Seawright is the guard's sister. She tells me he was escorting a troubled 15-year-old boy out of the mall. Once outside, police say that teenager opened fire. Why has he got a gun? Why? Why is a kid in this neighborhood walking around with a gun? The guard died at the scene. Shattered glass and bullet holes marking where he gave up his life while protecting others. Kind. He was a kind, nurturing person. He loved being in nature. He loved nurturing people. San Francisco Police Captain Derek Jackson and officers from Northern Station are showing a visible presence to calm nerves in Japantown. Just come out and let them know we're supporting them. You know, this was a tragic event. Not more yeah. than sad. Everybody, every town is sad. Ritsuko Suzuki owns a bonsai shop in the mall. She didn't want her face shown. The victim had only worked at the building for two months after management changed security firms. But in that short time, tenants say the guard had made a difference. He was the best of the security guy. When we need him, he already there. Always. So fast. Most unfortunate situation. The loss of another life because somebody was not disciplined, trained, exposed, and given guidance. I feel sorry for that security guard, man. That's, he died. That, that's, it's, just, it's just sad. Now, the names of the two teens allegedly involved have not been released because of their ages. They're being held at the Juvenile Justice Center. Live in San Francisco, Henry Lee, KTVU, Fox News.